Hello, hello, welcome, and today we are going to be doing this, right, 2D low poly art using a 2D vector software, Adobe Illustrator, instead of using Blender, a 3D software, because I love both. But anywho, so we're going to do this, and we're going to use this image, which is from Desert Rose 7, thank you so much, on Pixabay. Uh, so... The first thing you want to do is, after you download your reference image, right, uh, whether that's um, from Pixabay or whether it's something that you already have, uh, go ahead and create a new document, right? Uh, it doesn't matter the size. That's that's completely up to you. And uh, just uh, drag and drop, right? Uh, so let's go with this. Uh, I usually like to center it. Now, since it is not really like focused here because we also have these i like to just make it a little bit bigger and then make sure it's more towards the middle and then i also like to bring down the opacity a little bit now we are going to raise the opacity again uh after we do a few things right so afterwards just lock the layer create a new layer and save right so, Apple Low Poly, because I can't type. All right, anywho, so there's a few things, a few ways that you can do this, right? Um, there's the pen tool that you can use for the entire thing, or there's the line segment tool, right? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you what I mean. So let's say I'm going to use the line segment tool. I'm going to make a line here. I'm going to make the line a little bit bigger so we can see it, right? Uh, and then here, and then here, right? So making sure that both the uh, lines are either intersecting or <clears throat> they are touching, right? Or both the points are touching. Now overlapping that's what i meant to say now after i do that i can just do shift m for the shape builder tool and then there we go so we have our shape and that's it right so here now i can select it and it's not just and also one thing that you notice is we have these other um points that are just floating so that's the downside to this there's a lot more work that you may need to do cleanup wise right and then there's the pen method right or the pen tool method where you do this All right now i'm going to switch over to the selection tool uh shortcut v or keyboard shortcut v uh, as I've mentioned in my previous videos, you want to use the shortcuts uh, as much as possible because they are going to speed up the process for you. And uh, yeah, let's go to three. And there you go, right? So now <clears throat> we already have a uh, shape right away, right? So there's a couple different ways you can do this. Uh, one of the ways I like to do it, or the best way I like to do it, is the pen tool. Now, pen tool is the shortcut P or keyboard shortcut P, uh, and then the direct selection tool A. Now, you'll see what I mean on, on why I like to use these, right? So I'm gonna do this, and I like to use the direct selection tool to click off of the image, right? Because if I try making, like starting from here, if you notice, I just remove the point, right? And if I click over here, I just add another point to that shape. So there's a couple of different ways, again, you can go about this. You can click away from the uh, shape and then do it this way, All right? Or you can, let's say I wanted to do one over here, right? You can switch over to the direct selection tool, click away, switch back to the pen tool, and then there you go. Right. So there's a couple of different ways you can go about this. I'm going to use the pen and the selection tool, right, to kind of go through this. So 
And you always want to close your shapes, right? Now, there's also one thing I want you to keep in mind, and that is, if you notice the, uh, right here, right, we have the highlights, and then we have the different colors. You want to follow that as well. So over here, if you notice, I start to, what I did was I ended up um, having this uh, big triangle here, right? Now, because the this starts to change, and if you notice, there's two different uh, shades, right? I can do this. So I'm gonna create the line. I'm gonna select both, well, actually I'm gonna use the selection tool, right? And then I'm gonna shift M for the shape builder tool. And that way I have these two uh, shapes right here where I can have one shade here and a different shade here, right? Uh, work however it, uh, and, and again, they don't have to necessarily be uh, together or um, like in the corners, but it makes it easier, right? So the topology as, as like you would say in 3D um, kind of flows together, right? So anywho, uh, yeah, pretty much go through this whole process until you have all the, um, until you have the entire shape built out, right? So I'm just gonna use the, uh, uh, fast forward option <laughs> uh, So it's gonna be a time-lapse hope you guys enjoy it and we'll be back after the time-lapse. All right. Thank you Thank you So one thing you want to keep in mind is that when you're doing this right there are gonna be uh, areas where you can do smaller triangles and or tries and um, And it's okay, right like uh, towards the top I did small, uh, smaller triangles, and uh, for that area, it's good because there's there was a lot of change in shading, right? Now, when it comes to the bigger area, that's a very similar color, or there's not that much shading difference. That's when I can do the bigger triangles, and it makes this a lot faster, right? Uh, however, if I were to uh, make a bunch of small triangles, it aesthetically it may look okay or it may look good, but the issue there again is going to be that uh, it's going to be more tedious, right? So it's really up to you how you want to work this. Uh, but I would say the bigger areas that are a very similar color, try to make them. Uh, bigger triangles uh, instead of smaller triangles. All right, so I think that's uh, pretty much it, right? So now what I'm going to do is use the selection tool over here. Remember, shortcuts. In this case, it would be V, right? I'm going to hide this. I'm going to press Control Shift D to see the transparent grid and Control A to select everything. I'm just going to go ahead and fill this in with red to see if I missed anything. Right. So over here, if you notice, I am missing or not missing, but these are kind of creating a space. Right. So there we go. Mm. And one thing you want to keep in mind is that if you, for some reason, um, for example, here I have this one that's uh, curved, and you really don't want to do that. Um, you want to try and avoid these, right, uh, like points sticking out uh, because of the stroke. Now, to fix that, uh, let's see here. I think this is just going to make, yeah, it's going to do the same thing. So what I may want to do is 
I may actually just want to do this. Move this over here and move this over here. And that's it. All right. So when it comes to creating this type of shape, you want to try and have the um, the edge, like the border of the shape that you're trying to make, um, be flat. Right? You don't want points sticking out and everything. So that's tip number one. Now. Once you, well, that would be another tip, not tip number one. <laughs> so once you build out your shape, right, what we're going to do is first we're going to unlock this, select this layer, and I'm going to press Control shift d or if you go to, uh, was it, view? yeah, view, you can, uh, you can switch back and forth by clicking show transparency grid. But anywho, uh, go back to properties, raise the uh, opacity back up, because if you keep the opacity on, what's going to happen is that you're going to have like every, when you do this, th this next step, you're going to have like this uh, pinkish color or very washed out, um, very washed out uh, color. Now, if you notice, uh, some of them were curved and you may want to go through and, and make sure that these are not curved but let's say you you've done all that right now what you want to do is you want to click on the um, selection tool right select the shape and then I for the eyedropper tool and just select right just use the reference image in the background to pick the color that you want, right? And uh, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. Go through and just use the color picker or the eyedropper tool to, and switch back and forth, right? Between the, uh, between V for the selection tool and I for the eyedropper tool. And this will end up making your job that much easier and uh, you'll finish this up that much faster. So I'm going to do another time lapse while I just color in everything and uh, we'll go from there. See you in a second. All right, now a fast way to select the um, select the triangles that you're trying to work with, as you've seen, is for example, this one I just colored in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch back over to the selection tool using V, and then I press shift and then click and drag next to the one that I want to color in, right? without unselecting the one that I just colored in because that what that what that does is that shift when you uh, press shift it's going to either continuously select another shape or it's going to deselect certain shapes right so for example here I just do that and then I move back uh, I press I right to get uh, get the color uh, the eyedropper tool there we go and then shift sorry V and then shift drag and so if you notice I deselected this one and now I can just switch back over to the eyedropper tool and do the same thing right so this is a very fast way to work uh, so as I mentioned when you have the keyboard shortcuts it makes your job that much faster right or it makes working that much faster
All right, so there you have it. This is how you can go from this to this, right? Uh, now, so you guys can see it a little bit better. I can either put a background, uh, a white background, right? Or I can just go in, let's make this and press control and the oh yeah no that's that's there we go so now the way i did that is control shift and then the uh brackets key so object where is it i can never find it here we go arrange send to back as you notice control uh shift control and then the bracket and there you go now, to make this pop out a little bit more, let's do this, right? Let's know. Wow, that's kind of boring. There we go. Uh, maybe a purple. There we go. I like that. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial, and uh, remember, the way you can work faster is getting to know your keyboard shortcuts, right? Um, so if you guys enjoyed this, please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and I can't wait to see you next time. Cheers!